everybody yeah. i appreciate i see caitlin's on so we do have a, re a representation of all our towns and so um i just want to say thank you for coming um i think all of us know our goals are to keep our uh people safe in our communities um, and our schools open. The bottom line is we want everyone safe and the schools open. Um, Darius has been thinking about, um, um, you know, going, having the schools go back four days a week. So it's very important um, that we keep the schools safe. Um, but I'm concerned about Thanksgiving. And I, mm -hmm. I try not to impress, you know, impose my thinking on, on, um, everything that, that comes down the pike, but I, ha I have to say that um, Thanksgiving is really worrisome to me because all our college kids are getting out this coming weekend and will be coming home. And, and I think about my own self, you know, I did have four kids in college at once, but even if it was just the older two, I had one in Boston and one in New York City and if they came home, I have the perfect setup for quarantining. Um, the, the third floor, half the third floor is playroom. The other side is a you know, bedroom suite and bathroom and offices and everything. So everything's up on the third floor. They could quarantine fine, one of them. Second floor, five bedrooms, two and a half baths. It's it, plenty of room for the, to the second kid to quarantine. But they're coming home over the weekend Thanksgiving is Thursday. The normal, you know, the incubation period, if you were exposed to anything, is five to seven days. So they might not even be sick until, you know, Thanksgiving is over. And and you just, I have to tell you that yes, I might have been good for a couple days, but by Thanksgiving, Mike, I would have said, oh, you're not sick. Come on down, and you know, you're cooking you know, with a wood stove and, and your kitchen's warm and cozy and you got all the smells, people would have come down. And, and your kids in the middle of the night, you know, they're sitting there looking in the refrigerator for something. I mean, they're all over the place. There's no way you could keep them up. And then by the weekend, which is only a week away, and, you know, they haven't seen their friends si since September. And their best friends, Chicago, New York, upstate New York, Washington, DC, North Carolina, that's where they were coming back and they would see each other. So going to school on Monday after Thanksgiving doesn't make sense if we want the school to stay open for four days a week, to, you know, go four days. So if we go remote the week after Thanksgiving, all this will be settled out. Kids will have seen their friends. They will have whatever relatives were coming in. They have mixed and you have a whole week to be home and, and anything that's gonna turn up is gonna turn up and hopefully people will make good choices about not going to school sick. And then we can open four days. So my suggestion, and I hope it's supported by all our boards of health because Desi would give Darius a hard time about shutting down for remote, but it makes sense to protect our schools, our staff, teachers, um, and the kids so that we can go four days a week between Thanksgiving, you know, the week after Thanksgiving and Christmas to Christmas. And then we'll talk about Christmas, but I'm hoping everyone will agree that this might be the way to go. Cause I, even if I had the will and I have the place, I would not have been successful keeping my kids quarantined. I, I would agree well, with that, but I'll let somebody else speak. Uh, I'm uh, Ken Kushai from Sunderland, and okay. I, uh, I good evening, everybody. And I'd like to say that I I concur with your thoughts on that. Yes, I do too. This is Fran Fortino from Whaley. I wonder if uh, a week is actually enough, given. Um, people can show no symptoms for five plus days and then have the symptoms. So I consider even a longer period if you're gonna to go to four days afterwards. Well, I, you're never, 
I mean, as we know right now, Fran, we're never going to be able mm -hmm. until we have a vaccine to make it 100%. But right. I, I feel like we can make good decisions um, if we, you know, have this week extra because to me, the big exposure is college kids coming back. I mean, like I said, just based on what my kids did. And then, and then you have relatives that are coming, you know, the choices might not be so safe for Thanksgiving, but then you have a week, you know, there's like a 10 day period the following week. Yes, Trevor. Uh, I was, I was wondering if I could ask Darius, um, mm -hmm. how that plan sounds how would you implement does it seem workable do you need more time is that about the right time you know with staff and you know your schedules and all what does that look like to you yeah so basically what the enrolling that's the 48 week is you know and carolyn's talking about that's the that's the deerfield elementary plan right now they're they're hoping to have a four-day week plan for december 14th and it's still being worked on um but basically what i you know we started creating what we'll call it phase three um, and each school is different because each school has different demands. Um, and it's not yeah, just the change in like four days a week. It's actually the week after Thanksgiving, but there is a speaker. Uh, mute, please. Tina. Oh, sorry. I, I got it. Um, so the, uh, yeah. Um, so the, um, you know, the idea was that, um, you know, to come up with a phase three that, you know, wouldn't start until after Thanksgiving. Um, and, although some of the schools aren't talking about doing it until the beginning of January coming mm -hmm. back from that break. So the idea is not to rush out to get more kids back. The idea is what's our next phase going to be? This is what it looks like. When can we do it by? At the same time, we start to get the biggest, you know, the biggest uptick in our community, which, you know, some people are like, what are you, are you guys, you know, are you guys crazy? Um, mm -hmm. you, you're, you're starting with a phase three when you were seeing the biggest surge. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it just happens to be that's the way the timing was. When we, we started this conversation in the middle of October, started the planning process and then those numbers were fine then, and it you know it deserved us to take a stronger look at. It. You know, I guess I see the different sides of this, and I'm just going to say that from the school perspective, you got your two your two your two opposing sides on this kind of idea is that one schools are relatively safe. You know, the transmission that we're seeing is happening in the community. Um, you know, and so far as we can tell, so far it's not happening in the schools, based because we have the the mask, we have the social distancing, we're doing their our sanitation policies and that kind of stuff. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, there is the, you know, we created a model that allows us to go remote. That was the whole idea. So that when we have an outbreak where we th see community spread, and I think we are seeing community spread, um, the question is, you know, do we, do we pull back a little bit um, and, and let it calm down? And so I understand, I've heard from both sides on this, um, and, and, so, and I know some of you people have, people have counter thoughts on this, um, you know, that, you know, the idea of your know, kids need to be in school and so forth. So I hear it all. Um, I hear what Fran's saying is one week enough. You know, I don't, it depends on our, I guess, the caseload that's out there, you know. Um, but at the same time, the one thing I also have to say that isn't said that some people may just say, well, that's just the poo poo. There's a lot of stress on people dealing with this. Kids are coming and going from the building. Um, teachers are unsure about, what's happening with them in front of them. And, you know, we've been saying all along that we're in this together. We want to keep them safe and such. So there's a part, there's also a level of anxiety that has not come down. It's only going up and up and up. And, you know, there's, there's a valve of release here. So there's, it's, it's a safety valve of not just COVID, but the, the, our, our wellness valve of that. I, I put that on the table because it is a factor whether or not people want it. You know, we all have jobs to do and someone can say, you know, everybody needs to suck up and do their job. There's also, it's like, at what point, you know, um, you know, what point do we say, you know, let's take a, let's take a deep breath here. Let's respond to what we have there. So, you know, you got an administrator talking, I can go on all night. <laughs> I, I would uh, like to make a comment. Your name? Uh, Bruce Bennett, oh, Sunderland. Yep. Um, I kind of like the model of doing it week by week. Keep it remote for the first week, see how things go and then reconsider towards the beginning of the week to see what the uptick is. As, as Darius said, schools are relatively safe um, you know, throughout the country, but the uptick in the community and people coming around, and I think we have to look out for the health of our teachers. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe delay this until after Christmas. Um, 
that's that's the preferred model I would like to see. And but I'm just one voice. Um, I, I this uptick now is getting to be serious every place, mm -hmm. uh, even in the rural areas, and that's what's scary about it. So, you know, maybe just to the health of everybody in the community, you know, the faculty and the students, you know, maybe we should put it off till after the new year. Um, and, and as everybody knows, in those two or three weeks between Christmas and Thanksgiving, at least when I was in school, not much got done during that time period. So, you know, I know school is very important, but, um, you know, that's my feeling on it. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I, I, I hate to be a contrarian, um, but, um, the, but the, um, so first of all, um, Phil Cantor, Conway Select Board, Frontier School Committee and Conway School Committee. Um, the, the uh, you know, what, what, when I listened, I, you know, Carolyn, I, I listened to everything that you said. And to me, a lot, if not all of the arguments that you were making in favor of an all hybrid week or more um, uh, it, it, it are the same arguments that could have been made to to, for, for all hybrid education from day one. Mm -hmm. And that, um, I, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, it, it, and, and we, we've, for, first of all, like how, how real is the concern of yours? And I would, I, I, I would just suspect that the answer to that is sort of, maybe not all four towns have the same sort of threat level that, you know, mm -hmm. how, how many, uh, Conway's got 80, 80 the grammar school's got 80 families. Um, how many of them actually have college kids that are that were at, at college and are coming home for a break? I, I know almost all the college kids in Conway for this past semester have been remote or a hybrid thing of their own, and they've been home for quite a while. And I, I, I know that the number of families in Conway at, at the grammar school that have a college kid is under 10, possibly way under 10. Um, that that's that that's actually at an, at a college and will be coming home and isn't home yet, and you know could could all of this concern just be alleviated by just an extra co contact with those few families and say you know you got to you got to really but be, because we're not in, in all of this nobody's really talking I mean Darius addressed it but sort of what's the best for the kids and um and and, and I'm real. Uh, I get real concern when I hear just people that, um, um, you know, who don't have, um, uh, who, who aren't superintendents of the schools uh, it, it, talking about what the best interests of the kids should be or, or how education, you know, does go or doesn't go or whatever. And um, that, that there's sort of like an element of substitution of personal expertise and that there's like an element of, um, addressing threats that may or may not exist that, that I hear. And um, so, I, yeah, it, you know, the, the, the school committees have really chosen to sort of place their trust um, in, in the, 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 pe the people, the team that they have appointed of whom Meg is one and, and Darius is another that's on this meeting. And that um, th there's wisdom in that. Oh, uh, Phil, I'm, I'm, mm. that's why we're discussing it. But what started me thinking about this is um, actually my granddaughter, Madeline, in second grade. One of her classmates, when she was on Zoom, was, you know, remote, um, was talking about having um, their cousin come from Buffalo, New York, for Thanksgiving, a college student, and it was going to babysit for a while. And I was thinking, huh. And then I started thinking, would I be able to do this myself and in my own life? if you know years ago and and i don't know so anyway trevor well i think some of this direction you know and, and again we are we are four different towns and you know trying to work collectively here um I, some of this discussion was was geared around the deerfield elementary school and trying to focus the kids um that really really need and and for the teacher's sanity to really get the kids back to a four day uh, schedule. Um, it, it's very difficult for the teachers to be teaching hybrid and remote at the same time. And I think that um, 
and, and I think that, you know, the kids definitely learn better. I think everybody kind of wants to be back as much as they can. Um, and I think our concern was that while we're in favor of doing that, like right, you know, if we could give it a little bit of time right after Thanksgiving, just because we know that even though a lot of people won't be traveling, there will be some that are traveling and we're seeing the uptick a little bit right now, coincidentally, that we would give it that week to kind of calm down and see where things are at. Kind of like we did on, on Friday, we kind of assessed and felt like, okay, we're, we're good to go back. And I think that if we get to, you know, through that week when we're doing remote and, you know, the, the, the community sees like, okay, we've had a, a large blow up or something, then Darius could, you know, look at that and, and we, all of us kind of ass, ass, um, assess and say, well, you know what, I think we need another three days or another week or something like that, you know, on the fly assess that, but make the plan for, you know, mm -hmm. taking that week, doing it remote, it allows the teachers, at least, and, and this is selfishly from Deerfield, allows those teachers to kind of move the room, set up their, their setup for bringing all those kids back because it is a different flow and a different space workout for everything now that you'd have all the kids back. So I think that it, one, it gave, you know, some time to look at the community. It gave the teachers time to set up their rooms and, and get ready for that transition. And again, maybe that transition doesn't happen for a little longer based on the community. And Mm -hmm. what's happening but it gives um i think hearing from the school our school that's kind of what we would what we would need and, and i'm definitely open to listen to you know the leadership of the school to say we're ready or we're not ready you know as we get closer but just to try and set a plan is there anyone else who would like to say something Fran, did you want to say something? Yeah, I go back to um, what I originally said, and I think uh, people have elaborated on some options, and I think we should uh, bring that to uh, dis uh, discussion if the, that we have um, a kind of a proposal to take a, a preemptive break here between uh, or of a week. And I think it's been well considered. I, I don't know how the rest of the schools are, but Wadley Elementary is now in tough shape with 12 um, um, close contacts and several teachers among those. We don't know whether that school will be able to staff up in the next week. It's that dire. I don't think waiting until after Christmas is gonna help that school situation at all. So I'd be in favor of the proposal for a, a week after Thanksgiving to sort things out, just to give the students and teachers a little break from just what's to be, going on right now. Just to be clear, this is a week of remote. We we yeah, have remote, to have right. we have to have our use the correct language. When sure, we say remote. close down, we only mean we don't really mean close down. We mean remote. Okay. Exactly. Yes. I don't. Uh, Caitlin Rock, Sunderland Board of Health. Um, for the mental health and well-being, um, I don't. I don't see the harm in a week of remote following uh, following the Thanksgiving break. Um, I, but I, I don't want to just assume that um, all of our families are going to be breaking all of the recommendations put out by the governors and all of our, you know, uh, you oh, know I, I, I have to agree with Mr. Cantor, you yeah. know, that there, there aren't necessarily, you know, we, we've been told and we've been in some cases admonished <laughs> not, not to have, um, you know, large public gatherings and, you know, not to have, and, and I think that, that a lot of us are taking it pretty seriously. Um, and, uh, school is quite frankly, uh, is a very safe place to be for our children. We Kaylin, I just want to say up front, I agree a hundred percent what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. we went through Halloween really well. Yeah. Everybody. And, um, I was really pleasantly surprised, but I think part of the reasons, um, Halloween went well is because we talked about it and we worried about it. And I, I think this is kind of 
a preventative in the sense that people may make people think twice, maybe. And, and I don't think that, um, I don't think that going remote for the week after Thanksgiving is necessarily a bad thing because people will be traveling, um, whether we like it or not, you know, people are going to go see somebody. Um, and even if it's one or two people, you know, cause they won't be in these large gatherings and stuff. And so that might give a couple of days to see if any symptoms or anything come out. Um, and so I, I think that that's fair. I think that that's, you know, um, it gives, it gives a little bit of buffer time. Um, and so I, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. I think that, you know, when it comes to Christmas and stuff, I think we're going to have a little bit different because we're going to have a week off already after that. And then, you know, so I think we'll have to do some thinking and maybe some thinking ahead of time. Um, I actually was going to suggest that we just have a quick meeting sometime uh, before Christmas or after Christmas, just to confirm what we want to do um, after Christmas break, you know, give people a heads up. Well, that's what I mean. I think we should start thinking about that early because that's a different, that is a different animal. We're coming back on Monday from, you know, there will be people traveling to on Sunday, you know, Christmas is going to be a little different because we got a week time and not everybody travels, not everybody goes every place on Christmas. So I don't think it's the same. Um, but, but Thanksgiving's more of a, a different holiday. Um, but so that's my two cents, but I really do want to put it out there. I know this is being recorded and, you know, Sunderland is an amazingly prepared and safe school. That it is designed to be that way. And in the research I have done, the, the kids in that school, they don't change classes. They're in their pods. They're at distanced. They're wearing their masks. They have their breaks. They have their, you know, um, hand washing routines and they have everything and when you look at the studies coming out of Europe coming out of South America and coming out of the United States this is not where the transmission happens can it happen of course can I guarantee anybody anything no but where we are at is a pretty safe place transmission happens at home and happens at home gatherings, which is where we're going into next week, mm -hmm. which is why I'm, I'm okay with that buffer. So that's my two cents. Bernique, did you want to say anything um, Con from Conway? Uh, uh, sure, and Carl's here too. Um, I, I would agree, actually. I think this would be, you know, we're going into the unknown, Halloween, Thank goodness, you know, we, we got by it, but Halloween is not really that much of an indoor gathering situation. Thanksgiving and Christmas are very much about the family gatherings. And this is an unknown animal for us. And I think it's really wise to be cautious. Um, you know, so I would be more than happy to say, yeah, let's give it, let, let and let's see. I mean, you know, I, 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 and, and I would be led to by, by what Darius um, suggests. But, but I'm happy to be cautious about this and say, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, my brother just told me he's coming for, for Christmas with his kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, he asked me, I have to say, he asked me. But, you know, these, these two holidays are, you know, and let's face it, everybody is so sick of COVID and they really want to see people. And like you said, Christmas, um, there, there is a break afterwards. So maybe being a little bit more cautious right after Thanksgiving is not a bad idea. Just really grateful for this group of people and, um, for, and for Darius and the team and Meg and everybody that, you know, Carolyn, they've been working on this. Um, you're all amazing and you're, you know, really caring about our community and doing a great job and happy um, that we're leading by example for our kids and our community and we're very lucky. Yes, we have some upticks here and there, but thinking across the country, I'm very grateful to live here with, with you know, this group of people leading our schools and our, our public health. So thank you.
So, to, to, and um, so the, the, the one just thing I'd like to add is that, you know, that throughout this discussion, um, I, I kind of hear um, maybe people talking about uh, vir switching to virtual as um, that nobody's talking about the cost to kids, to, to the kids themselves. And that, you know, it's, it's demand, you can, it's demonstrable um, evident, whatever, it, it, that, that missing just one day of live instruction can be, uh, ha has demonstrably, uh, demonstrable bad, bad uh, you know, uh, it's bad for kids. And they can tell, they can tell over a 300, over a 160 day normal school year, when a kid misses just one day of school, they can tell that at the end of the year by te through testing already. Um, so, so, you know, by, by saying you're going to remote also, you're also um, condemning that portion of the population that has IEPs for, for daily services for their children, which is a significant portion of our population. Um, and, and that the school is where they go to get those services. And so even if you are going to do a sort of remote only, there is that whole segment of the population that still should be accepted from your uh, order or that I would ask that you consider be accepted from your order. Um, namely, namely those students that have IEPs and individual student plans that require daily services from our schools. Um, that that's a, that's a whole separate thing and we're lumping in together too. So, yeah, sorry. Bob. Uh, I, I'm wondering if Chris can, Kristen could talk about what the teacher's view is. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, you know, or maybe Darius could talk about what frontier teachers are thinking. And, 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 and I don't know what parents are thinking. My kids are all long out of school and we told them don't come home. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and it's tragic. I mean, you know, they're heartbroken. Thanksgiving is their favorite vacation, but not this year, you know, we'll do it by zoom. We'll have a, we'll all sit in front of our Turkey with zoom and, you know, and eat together. But, uh, but anyway, I'm just wondering what the what the teachers are thinking. Can I can I just speak to Mr. Cantor just very briefly? Um, I absolutely agree that you know missing school is a detriment to all students and especially the non-English speaking and the IEPs. But when I'm recommending a buffer week. I am purely, and I do have children in the school, in the fourth grade at Sunderland. And one of them has a 504. <laughs> so um, when I am recommending that, this is a public health emergency. So when we're asking for exceptions, that does not, you can't accept a public health emergency because when you're talking about COVID and the spread of a disease, mm -hmm. then you, you're, I, you're, what we're trying to do is swap emergencies. And I get it. I get it 100%. And what we're doing is we're swapping one truck, and I'm going to be dramatic, okay, but I have to use the words, one tragedy for the other tragedy. And so that's, that, is, that is what a pandemic does. And so that's kind of what we're faced with when we make these huge decisions. And, and that's, I'm just kind of laying it out. But that is, I am taking that into, I, I, I am absolutely taking into account the non-English speaking and the IEP kids. But I'm still, my recommendation is still that, you know, we do give a buffer week. But I do want you to know, and anyone else who's listening, that I do believe, uh, you know, Mr. Modesto and, you know, all of the educational people here are taking into account that. Mm -hmm. But that's just. I just want to be clear. Absolutely. The whole goal is to keep the schools then open till Christmas and, and by taking the buffer week. If we didn't have the buffer week, I'm afraid of the community spread that's happening now. And then you add in the, you know, the holiday and the college kids coming back to the community and then mixing in the community. I think if we didn't take the buffer week, we'd end up closing down the schools anyway. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was what made me propose this meeting 
was because the, the whole thing I wanted to safeguard um, the December, the month of December, and, and, and make sure the kids had um, you know, some school before Christmas break, because I was afraid we would end up not having any school before Christmas. So, could, could I ask you just to, could I ask Darius just to straight up give an opinion on the week uh, thing? Cause, cause I kind of heard, I mean, it seems like there's people that seem to think that your opinion was more, uh, you know, what, whatever. I, I kind of heard reluctance in your comments earlier, but I'm, so I just wanted to ask you straight so, up, what is your opinion of this? Well, let me, you know, I was going to jump in because uh, Caitlin, I think, pointed out a, a, a good point. You know, we created a system for the shutting down of schools to go to the Board of Health. Now, we have neighboring districts where the school committee has shut down the school. Okay, so North Adams got shut down. I think you saw that Mahar got shut down. Turner's Falls got shut down um, due to the, the recent, um, you know, increase of, of, of cases. And we really have moved, and this is a unique model to this, and I I don't know if, if, if we're in the right spot, if, you know, I'm looking at it because I kind of created it as, as we kind of plan things forward because the boards of health have the information regarding this problem. Whereas I think Caitlin brings up, and I thought okay, when you said it, it may be kind of do an aha, where it's true. Like if we were just the school committee, our number one job is looking out for our vulnerable learners, all learners, but our, especially the vulnerable learners. But then we start crossing the two, the two, the two problems, you know, that have to be solved. And so I think that was just kind of a good point. That's why we're in front of the boards of health. And if anybody else is kind of watching, like, why is this in front of the boards of health, and not the school committee? Because we basically said the shutdown from COVID, it's a health emergency. And it has to be done by, I believe it should be done, not by someone who's thinking about mm -hmm. a child's advancement in the curriculum this week, but the health of the community, you know, so that's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of where we're at here. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, right now it's um, the front lines of this is not easy. And I know if I don't want anybody saying like, come on, you put on your New England boots, nothing's easy. But, you know, I spent the whole day on the phone dealing with COVID. Who's got it? Who doesn't have it? Who are we waiting on tests on? And Megan's mm -hmm. on nodding yes. You know, what do we do? How long That's are we right. for? How much is too much caution? How much is enough caution? You know, um, and then at the same time, trying to communicate that out with teaching staff who are, you know, you know there's, there's people are scared. You know, they're scared. They, it's it's unlike any other job that's out there. Um, you know, where you have prolonged fit, over 15 minute contact with people. You know, businesses that have COVID get shut down. You know, what I mean, this is a service industry where we continue mm -hmm. to move the kids through the door. And so, there is a part where, you know, when you look at the education side of it, there's going to be a loss. And there are some students that, if we're not, if we don't see them in person, they're not going to make gains. That's just the absolute truth. And we'll, you know, I'm certainly going to hear from parents that, you know, this is not a fair setup. You know, the COVID isn't fair. You know, um, and that's, I, I think, the, the absolute truth there. Um, you know, and there's going to be a lot of tears from a lot of kids who, you know, I look at my own included, who look forward to the days in person, can't stand the days at home. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, look at my own parent hat that's on there. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, we do, you're, you know, that's where I'm, I'm, where I'm kind of caught, I'm in the middle of it. I'll be honest with you. I see like the, the reason to power forward, but I also feel like, you know what, I think the community does need to take a breath of fresh air. I take a breath of fresh air, take a breath. Um, because we are the, I, just for clarity, we are the lone community in the area that's had our kids back since the, the third week of September. Okay. Everybody else has, it's, if they're gone back, it's in a very small, I mean, you saw Turner's went back. We had 20 kids. We had 20 kids in one classroom, you know, well, not necessarily, but in one grade level um, that I've gone back. You know, you're talking about these other kind of districts. We've been back for a while and we, the way I've been saying it, and I know that in the teachers, you know, like we said, we, we're going to build a plan that's going to protect you. And that's going to have this in mind. Maybe this is overstepping slightly, you know, because we believe schools are safe. And that's where I say, we're, that's where the argument is. You know, if schools are safe, the teachers are safe. We can continue to offer that service to the community right through this. But the other side of me kind of says like, let's acknowledge that we're in a pandemic and we're not kind of blindly going through it. And, you know, we're gonna to have to, those kids who need those extra services, um, you know, they're, it's gonna be down. We're gonna do what we can for that week. Um, you know, I mean, already we're getting, you know, some students are um, deciding to go remote. 
um, right now. Um, we, we are getting some more decisions going that route. Um, although the undergrades, you're getting more kids who, you know, more people want to come back to large amounts in person. And so I guess the other side is if this gets into even worse, how long do we, it takes us to dig us out before we can go back with even more students in the building? And so that's kind of where I think Trevor was saying that earlier. That was kind of a point I was speaking to him before. Like, the idea is to launch a phase three. We're bringing more students back safely. Um, you know, not really increasing risk by that much because of our safety protocols. But if this thing turns into, you know, where we're shutting down classroom after classroom after classroom and unknown and people lose confidence in the system, mm -hmm. how long does it take us to build that confidence up? And I guess that was another, another mm -hmm. point. So, um, you know, I don't want to over like, I have relationships with a lot of you and a lot of, some of you have actually said, Darius, we trust your leadership. Tell us what your thoughts are. It will make it, Phil, you've said that once and I shamed you for saying it the first time. Like with Darius, we trust. I think you said that. No, 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 This is, this committee, I need your, your thoughts on it to make this decision. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm purposely in the middle because I see both sides. And I, I know that not everybody's going to agree with it. Mm -hmm. You're muted both. Trevor, you got to unmute. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate um, that, you know, heartfelt, ex, you know, explanation of where you stand. And, um, uh, you know, I, for one, see the value in um, a, a switch to, to remote for the one week after Thanksgiving. It, it gives, the, at least in Deerfield, because that's kind of the hat I'm wearing it uh, for the school committee in Deerfield. I understand that it would help the, the teachers kind of set up for returning um, the younger kids back to a four day week. Um, it gives us a little bit of a buffer in that little bit of time. I mean, these are all the points I've made before, but um, so I'm in favor of, you know, making a motion to, um, to take a, um, a pause for in-person learning for the week after Thanksgiving, those four days, the Monday, Tuesday, you know, Thursday, Friday, um, and, and allow, um, allow, allow time to assess the, assess the community. Um, and we'll know a little bit more in a couple of weeks, you know, everything changes pretty fast. So we, we always reserve the right to change, but um, to take that, that week to do um, remote learning and set up if possible, depending on the school, but for Deerfield um, to, to move forward with a four day um, in-person learning, obviously with the assessment, you know, but before we get there that if we have to change that we will. Um, but I, I, you know, I do see the benefit of having the kids in the school, especially those younger ages, um, as much as we can, and um, if it's safe to do so. And I've always been talking about science and following the facts, looking at our trans, you know, transmission rate and infection rate. And I think we're safe enough to do that. And I just don't want to jeopardize that by thinking blindly, we're going to be okay after Thanksgiving, because every, after every holiday, there seems to be a little bit of a, a bump up, and and I just feel like where uh, many people do get together around Thanksgiving, I think it's safe to just do it to do the remote for the for the four days, and then um, assess and come back for four. So that I'll just leave it there. Thank you. We'll second that motion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry it was so long. <laughs> <laughs> um. You're, you're muted, Carolyn. You're muted. Yep. Sorry. For the record, Trevor made the motion. And who seconded it? I did. Bruce. 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 Thank you, Bruce. This is Bruce Bennett. Thank you. So, well, then I would, I suppose, um, state that for Sunderland Elementary, um, um, since I'm not the chair of this meeting, I would move... Um, that uh, Sunderland go remote the week after, um, for the week after, uh, full I, I think, I think, Caitlin, um, this group is just making a motion to endorse this. Um, well, and then we're going to have to vote, we're going to have to vote individually. I think what we need, the, the whole point was to, to act unified. So um, we're just going to vote to do this, and then we have to re-vote as individual um, boards of health. And um, I know Deerfield 
has um, a meeting post, you know, our, our meeting is tomorrow. So we could vote on that. Um, I don't know if you have a quorum. Does everyone here have a quorum? Sunderland does. Uh, Sunderland no. does? Yes. Okay. And Wait, Fran, do you the... have a quorum? Yeah. Conway yes. doesn't. So okay. Conway so Conway, Conway would have to vote separately. Um, Dave isn't here, but Trevor and I are a quorum. So mm -hmm. let's, let's vote as a group. And then for the record, everybody that has a quorum can vote individually. And that way, Darius... Uh, is covered. Um, my concern is if Desi wants to come and do an audit of of, of Darius, we provide we are providing cover for mm -hmm. that by making good public health decisions, mm -hmm. and they can fight with us. And yep. the thing yeah. is, if we are doing this right and making good decisions, then our school will be open and everybody else is shut down. So. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Come after us. I don't really care. <laughs> and um, so, Bob. What quorum are you looking for, Carolyn? The quorum of the boards of health in each of the four towns. The reason why I have, you know, I sent it out to the whole EDS group is because it's very important that we all stay united in yeah. our decision making. But in this case, the boards of health are taking the responsibility of this decision. So any audit or anything by Desi coming back, um, you know, Darius isn't going to have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So um, is there anyone against this motion that's in this group? It's the motion. No. The motion, the motion to have a remote week. And this is the general group. Okay. I don't hear anybody against it. Okay. So that means let's move forward. Um, so, unless sorry, Phil, sorry, I, I'm against that. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, but that's that's um, yeah. okay, Phil. All, so I, uh, yeah. I totally Although, understand. But yeah. if there's anybody else besides Phil against it, let me know. Okay, so I would just say it carries as a group. Now, every individual board of health that's here, um, we'll start with Sunderland, and then we'll go to um, Waitley. Conway's going to have to vote separately, mm -hmm. and then Deerfield. We'll all vote this tonight yeah. so that Darius um, can move forward. So, mm -hmm. um, Caitlin, you want to go ahead? Sure. Bruce, would you make the motion? Uh, make a motion that we go to uh, remote learning the week after Thanksgiving. Okay. I'll second that second motion. Oh, okay. Ken Kushai seconds the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, three to zero. Oh, and can you just do a roll call vote? Just to Caitlin, you got to do a roll call vote, honey. Okay, uh, how, how do you vote, Bruce Bennett? Yes. Uh, Ken Kushai, how do you vote? Yes. And Caitlin Rock votes yes. Thank you, Sunderland. Thank, Thank you. you, Sunderland. Okay, um, you're wait, welcome. Wait, wait, go ahead. Yes, um, I make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, plan to go remote after Thanksgiving for one week in uh, the Frontier School System. And uh, I think I need a second from Mike. Mike's here. Yep, yep. I'm absolutely, uh, we'll second that. So I'll take a roll call. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Mike. So, Mike. Fran, you Archibald. have to identify yourself. Fran, you need to I'm identify I'm Fran Francis Fortino, yes. And Mike Archibald. Mike Archibald, um, and I am, um, um, I also agree. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Thank you Waitley. Um, I will make the motion to um, go uh, for Union 38 to go remote the week after um, or Deerfield and Frontier to go mm -hmm. um, remote the week after um, Thanksgiving. Carol. I'll second that Sorry. motion. Here I yelled Sorry, at everyone you. and then I forgot to say Carol. <laughs> All right. And then Trevor McDonald. Yes. I mean, McDonald. <laughs> Trevor McDonald. It's been a long, <laughs> yeah, a long day. Wicked long day. Trevor is, is seconded. Trevor McDaniel, okay. yes. All right. Carolyn Ness, yes. Okay. Thank Darius, you. Darius, three of the four towns have voted to do this, and, and the group in general is in support. And I certainly understand where um, uh, Phil is coming from. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully um, Conway can post 
a meeting and, and vote. So just out of clarity for Bruce brought it up earlier that, um, you know, we sh he said to do it one week and then take a look at that information. I think it's fair that um, I think I'll be, I'm in contact with the chairs and if the chairs feel like there's the numbers are, are concerning that they want to get back together, you know, you know, something like, you know, December 3rd or something like that. But we'll sure, look at sure. those numbers and I think the chairs can make the decision at that. I think it's going to make sure everybody's comfortable because that was kind of one of the thoughts there is that yes. we'll look at the numbers and if there is this <coughs> the predictor, if there is a, is an outbreak that we're concerned, the chairs can call another meeting to decide to take further action. We can call emergency meetings in our town. Yeah, we can call an emergency meeting. The, that was I also wanted the group public. together. I wanted the group together. That's why we posted this and we had time um, to make the decision. But if if the week after Thanksgiving and we have this huge outbreak and our huge problems, absolutely, we'll just have an emergency meeting. We do not need to post an emergency and then we can vote. Well, thank you everyone. Thanks. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving and I hope because we're talking about it and worrying about it, uh, people will come up with creative ways to be safe and um, and this will not, you know, not be anything bad. So great. Um, thank adjourn. you again. What? Ten, ten <laughs> Move that we adjourn the meeting. Second. That sounds good. Anybody against it? Happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> right. everybody. And thank you for all you do. Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Bye. Everybody stay Bye -bye. healthy. You too.